questions about that. This is an annual piece and we, we do it every year. Okay, Mrs. Bobbitt, will you second that please? I will. Okay. Uh, the next resolution on the docket is 16-20. Uh, this is a resolution authorizing the disposition of city property that is no longer needed via a live or internet auction for 2020. Uh, this is an annual event. Uh, Superintendent Hintz, do you want to give us any other information? Good evening. Um, annual piece of legislation we do every year. Um, last year worked out real well for us. Uh, largest auction we had, I think we were about 178,000 uh, return on everything we sold. So very good auction. We've got a good auctioneer. Moving forward with this one, or moving forward for this year, uh, third, third Saturday of July, I believe. But. Uh, You'll get emails here shortly. Okay, any questions for um, Superintendent Hens? Okay, Mr. Stone, will you second that, please? Oh, um, three readings? Okay, thank you. Uh, the next resolution is 17-20. Uh, this is a resolution to allow the city auditor to request an advance of funds from Fairfield County of the city's apportionment of tax settlements for 2020. This is an annual piece. Auditor Nettles, would you like to provide some dialogue? Yeah, this is something that we're required to do to, uh, to give to the county auditor in order for me to request cash advances on our real estate settlements. Um, so I'd like to have that in two readings, if I could. Okay, Mrs. Bobbitt, will you also second that? I will do that. Thank you. Uh, the next ones are resolutions 18-20 and 19-20. These are resolutions authorizing the City Service Safety Director to advertise for bids and enter into contracts for purchasing phosphate and salt for use by the Water Department. I will yield to Mr. Nixon. <laughs> As will you. Members of Finance City Council, these uh, again are annual pieces. Uh, they can go three readings. This just authorizes us to uh, advertise for bids for these two uh, items used in the Division of Water. Okay. Three readings, and um, I believe your seconds are Mrs. Tiener on 18 and uh, Mr. Hall on 19. That's correct. Okay. Uh, the next resolution is 20-20. Uh, this is a resolution to um, a complete fund transfer into the Wastewater Fund 604 and Wastewater Utility Reserve Fund 629. Mr. James. I once again will yield to uh, Superintendent Nixon for a little more information. This too is an annual piece if uh, the year works out well. Last year uh, the revenue exceeded uh, by plan the expenses then this 3.695 million will be uh, per our bond covenants transferred from the water revenue fund and wastewater revenue fund into the wastewater utility reserve fund this will be uh, money that we will uh, been building back in anticipation of the upcoming lawrence street improvements so hopefully we can pay <coughs> cash for more of this and have debt service for less of that 20 to 25 million dollar project uh, the debt service with uh, principal and interest uh, adds up over time so we'd like to have as little debt as we can but unfortunately it'll probably still be more sizable than we'd like and so this can also go three readings okay thank you 
And Mrs. Tina, you're the second. Okay. Uh, resolution 21-20. Uh, this is a resolution authorizing LPD to apply for the 2020-21 Drug Use Prevention Grant. Mrs. Bobbitt. Yes, this is Chief Pilar. <laughs> Could you please speak on this? Uh, yeah, good evening. Uh, this is an annual resolution to uh, request permission to apply for, uh, to get reimbursed for time that our officers spend teaching DARE in the schools. It usually runs fifteen to $20,000 for the amount of time we spend teaching DARE. And it's an annual piece? Yes. Um, do we want to go two readings or three readings? It's your pleasure, ma'am. You know, however you guys want to do it. We haven't, you know, we, we got to wait until you get it approved before we actually submit the grant. So. Okay, then we should probably do one reading then tonight. So I will be asking for suspension. And here's your second, please. That's it. Mr. McDaniels. Okay. Thank you. next resolution is 22-20 uh, coming out of Public Works. This is a resolution authorizing the City Service Safety Director to enter into an agreement with ODOT to purchase sodium chloride rock salt for the 2019-2020 winter season. Mr. Schoonover. Uh, this is just an annual piece getting the ball rolling for the street department to buy their salt for the salt barn. Um, we can do three readings on this. Any questions, Mr. Hens? I have a question for Mr. Hens. Okay, he's coming. <coughs> you know what my question is. Yeah. How are we doing on consumption this year compared to expectations? Consumption's down, way, way down. That's a good thing for right now. Salt barn's full. Um, Hopefully it starts snowing here before long. No. <laughs> you did not say that out loud. Well, you know what? I got, I, I, we've taken, we weren't completely full, so we've taken about 500 tons so far. Um, leaves us with a balance of about 1,400 that we have to get inside yet, and I have no room for it. So, um, makes, made a few phone calls. We're, and we're, we're anticipating on being able to put everything in the barn, but with that being said, we'll see what happens. Uh, if anybody's got a crystal ball they can loan me, I sure would appreciate it. So. <laughs> yes, this is Bob. How does this, um, how's this year's price compared with last year's price? Went up $3 and just a shade over $3 a ton. So it went up last year that much or more, didn't it? No, last year it went up twenty twenty seven dollars a ton or something like that. We're we're about we're eighty three ninety five a ton this year. So that's the most we've ever paid for salt. Okay. Thank you. So I don't, don't remember if you mentioned, so what about storage then? Will we be able to use somebody to help us store like we have in the I've past? made a few phone calls. I've uh, talked to uh, Burn Township trustees where we've stored in the okay. past. Um, I think it's a race to see who gets there first, us or the county. Um, I think we both called on the same day, so um, we'll just have to see how things shake out at the end. Okay. Worst case scenario, I'll have to pay to store some of it, um, but I don't think. Hopefully, we're hopefully we can get it in the barn. That's that's our goal. Okay. Any yes. Just Mr. real quick, I'll be, I'm, this is mm -hmm. maybe just kind of an on sequitur, but just out of curiosity, what's our annual salt consumption? You may have said, but I didn't hear. About twenty three hundred ton. That's used to be. It used to be. We used to push 30, 32, 3,500 ton um, with the new equipment and stuff we've got. Uh, we've been able to dial that back considerably. So different application rates, different types of applications. So that's helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Superintendent Hans before we let him go? Okay. 
Thank, Thank you. you. Next resolution is 24-20. Uh, uh, this is coming out of finance, a resolution appropriating from the General Fund 101 in the amount of $20,000 for improvements to the space in City Hall leased by Congressman Stivers. Uh, City Service Safety Director Martin, would you please comment? So Congressman Stivers' office is requested to have an improvement on security. We did have a couple of issues last year. Uh, and so they've been working with the U.S. House of Representatives. Um, and whatever in Washington, D.C., the steps they go through. So they got approved. We will be reimbursed, but we, we are going to be increasing their rent per month. So we will re receive this reimbursement by the end of the year on the last payment in December. But we have to upfront the money. We have to actually perform the project um, per their requirements, which makes sense. We've done this before. We did this when uh, they were going to start our space. We did an improvement on the space before they moved in and then we uh, made that in adjustment into the rent to reflect that. So uh, I would ask if it's okay, since it's going to be a reimbursed, that if it's possible for you to suspend the night, I could engage in a contract knowing that I'd like to get the contract going so they can order the, the glass and the, the security components that's got to get ordered out and then we can get the project scheduled. I'd like to have that kind of done if it's possible at least by two readings, see which, whatever you think. When does the, when is the next payment for the rent? Well, I got Treasurer Wolfinger working on that for us. It, the next payment will be uh, March, and I believe she's made arrangements. What they're going to do is they're going to take the bid amount divided by 10 months at this point in time. Whatever's left. Right. But okay. If it doesn't get in, it'll be nine months, but it'll all be paid back. So if you authorize this tonight, I will engage in the contract. We have a bid just under 19000 We're asking for twenty. Whatever we don't use, we'll just go on and cover the back. Um, so uh, I, it would be great if you could do that tonight and I can engage. And that way they wouldn't have to pay back over nine months, but they could do it over ten months. Right. Yeah. This is the exact same way we did the remodel when they moved in from the across the street. Got it. Um, I don't have a problem suspending if you would second and okay. Okay, any other questions on 24-20? <coughs> okay. Uh, next resolution is 25-20. Um, this is coming out of Water Water Pollution Control. The resolution authorizing the City Service Safety Director to advertise for bids for the Broad and Mulberry Sewer Separation Project. And I will yield to Mr. Steve Wellstead to give us a little more information. Good evening, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, this is just, again, a simple uh, asking for um, authorization to advertise for bids for a project. We have um, three catch basins at the intersection of Broad and Mulberry that are currently tied into the combined sewer that runs down Mulberry Street. Um, we've been told by engineering that they plan to pay Broad Street uh, later this year. So our thought was let's get in, get those, uh, uh, dig those sewers up, reroute them, and get them into the storm sewer that runs along Broad Street there uh, prior to them um, paving that so we can get that done and, and get that off our plate. Uh, that will help us, uh, you know, our goal to reach the Ohio EPA uh, long-term control plan, um, CSO uh, plan by uh, 2035. So um, that's, that's basically it. Okay. Any questions? Steve, from a timing standpoint, do you need uh, more than one, two readings or three? Three readings is fine. Uh, I anticipated the earliest we're going to advertise is that last Friday in February, I believe, which is uh, after would be after the third reading for this legislation. So it's <coughs> totally fine in this case. And um, is Mr. Hall your second on that? Mr. Hall is the second. Okay. Great. Uh, next resolution is 26-20. Uh, this is coming through finance. Uh, it's a resolution appropriating from the General Fund 101 in the amount of $10,000 for the grant writer's first quarter fee. Mayor Shefford. Yes. Um, this is a federal wage and hour issue. Um, the uh, two... I guess rebudget the fee for our grant writer who has accepted a position as uh, the new executive director of community development uh, after Mary Jo Smith's retirement. And so um, we found out that we cannot pay a person um, 
for uh, wage and hour requirements as a, an independent contractor, which um, she has a separate company that we were paying to do the grant writing. She's going to be an employee, so it has to be all wages. So this involved putting this money back in so we could pay her in the first few months of the year before she becomes a salaried employee. So it's just a change in the budget. That all makes sense. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Mrs. So she's going to be doing two jobs then? Well, she is going to be the new community development director, and she will continue to also write other grants that she's been doing so far. So it will all be under salary going forward after she starts as an employee instead of as an independent contractor basis. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Mrs. But the CDBG is paid out of that. that yes. It's paid out of that. Right. So um, not out of this $10,000. Right. Correct. Right. It's but paid. She's got, that's a separate. That's separate. <clears throat> that's correct. So this is the separate portion right. for grant writing until she becomes a salaried employee. Okay. Oh, and we would like to suspend since she's been working. Um, <laughs> so far this year and hasn't gotten paid. <laughs> okay, um, so we will ask for suspension on this, and Mr. Stoughton, will you be my second? Yes. Okay, any other questions before we move to the next one? All right, uh, Ordinance 2-20, uh, this is coming out of Public Works. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend the Transit Pay Ordinance for 2020. Mr. Stoughton. Uh, yep, yeah. uh, Carrie's on her way. Miss Woody's going to explain this piece. Thank you, Mr. Schoonover and uh, members of council. Um, so, as you know, we've transitioned under the city for public transit, and through the transition, we're learning. Um, so, one of the things that I had overlooked when we were putting our plans together was we are open from 6 in the morning until 10 at night. And I planned for every position, um, with the exception of the lead operator. We have a lead operator that works the morning shift, but we didn't have one to cover the evening shift. So myself, I've been staying. I've been working from 7.30 until around 6.30, 7 o'clock at night every day because I've been trying to cover the lunch break for our PM dispatcher and as drivers are pulling in in the evening and doing some gate checks and things like that. Um, so we really need a second lead operator to work those later hours, to work like a 9.30 to 6.30 or a 9.30 or a 10 to 7 type shift so that they can cover that PM dispatch um, for the lunch break for the PM dispatcher and then some of those safety related things like training and uh, gate checks and things for those evening drivers. Um, our proposal is that we would just take one of the part-time driving positions that we've already have and make that into a full-time position. It will not cost, it won't add to our budget, it will fit into this year's budget um, without us having to go back and reappropriate anything at this point. Um, I don't foresee needing to reappropriate anything for the entire year even by making this change um, to add that second lead operator. So in other words, <clears throat> what we authorized in the budget that was going to transit, that's not going to raise? That will not change, correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? How are with hiring in that? Um, we've lost anybody or anybody since the so transition? We've, we've lost a couple people. Um, so, for example, so Ride Right did things a lot differently. Um, they had a lot of full-time drivers that only worked 30 hours a week. They had a, a several part-time dispatchers that just worked random hours. So when we structured it, we wanted to be more like a business model. What are the hours? What hours do we need covered? Now, granted, I did overlook that second lead operator, and that's totally on me. But So we had... When Ride Right, when we had to transition going from basically two and a half dispatchers, two full time and then one part time dispatcher to do Saturday dispatching, um, the person that we hired for the Saturday dispatch, um, they didn't really want to work Saturdays. They had usually only dispatched from 6 to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday, and they really didn't want to have to do a Saturday and they didn't want to drive. 
So they worked basically one Saturday and said, ah, I really don't want to do this, and then they quit. Um, and then we've lost two drivers to CODA because they could get on full-time driving at CODA starting at $15 an hour. Um, but other than that, we really haven't lost anyone. We still need to hire probably three to four additional part-time drivers um, that we're working on. We have, one in, we have one that just completed training, actually two that just completed training, one that's in training, and then we have a couple interviews later this week. So we're making progress slowly but surely, but we definitely need a second lead operator because I love my job, but I really don't want to work um, 7.30 to 6.30 for the rest of my life. <laughs> Any other questions? Mr. Schoonover, how many readings? So it can go three readings, because he's looking at me, sorry. Um, it can go three readings. Uh, if you would be so kind as to consider maybe two, I'd be uh, completely ecstatic. Um, but it can go three readings. I'm fine with two. So there you go. Does Thank that, you. that get you working less sooner? Yes. It does. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to turn the, let's see, wait. Do we have any departmental updates? And you're back. <coughs> I'll just uh, give a couple. Um, so I will have coming forth uh, here in the next few uh, meetings all of our annual legislation just to give you a heads up it's nothing new it's all of our annual pieces of applying for different grants and things like that um, and then I did want to do just a quick reminder that uh, if you recall the last couple years we've done Ohio Loves Transit with all of the Ohio Public Transit Association where we've done rides um, on Valentine's Day free so we are going to participate and do that again this year so it'll be free rides on Valentine's Day for all of our loop buses and I would encourage you all to get out and ride with us um, I will be sending out some invites uh, via your emails for anyone who would like to join us um, but if you're not able to join us with like a big group ride then we would encourage you to at least try and get out on Valentine's Day and ride public transit thank you thank you Yes, Ms. I'm sorry, I have one other question. Mm -hmm. If it's not changing our budget, and you've already told us how many hours you're working, could we just suspend on it this evening? I'm fine with that if you guys are fine with that. I mean, it's not, um, yeah. you know, we're not. Same stuff. It's, it's, it's yeah. That's fine. Yes, Mr. Martin. So, just got some sad news here in the fact that I need to replace a roof here in the city. Some of you know about 121 East Chestnut Street. It's our city annex building next to the police department parking lot on East Chestnut Street. We've been working with off and on for about three years, some leaks there. I've had two companies come in and do some core samples, analyzing of it. And sorry to report, we're just going to have to replace it. So I don't have any legislation tonight. I got to get uh, get that process ironed out. I would like to uh, bring in legislation next time. I say sad news because I'm going to be asking for maybe $180,000, $85,000. I'm going to say $185,000 right now. Gives me a little bit of contingency in there. And we're evaluating the quality of roof and that process that we go through. I really need to get this done probably in April or May to get into the spring season uh, because we're having some issues right now. I don't want to even spend the three, four thousand dollars I need to maybe fix the leaks right now. But the roof is, uh, the insulation underneath is saturated. It's the second roof on there already and when you get to the second level you just got to take it off and you got to put a new roof on. And uh, I'm a proponent of trying to get uh, good materials to get a lot of longevity out of that roof. So just want to give you a heads up about it. And uh, yes, we have a lot of issues in City Hall, but I'm asking for funding for that building right now. As you know, the top floor, I'd like to be able to take care of them um, as well as everybody. But they're, they're seeing that right now. There's some buckets on desk at times. So uh, just to give you a heads up, I'll bring that legislation in next time. Okay, you talk of this like this has been a recurring terrible problem. It's the first I've heard of it ever. So we've been successful last couple of years dealing with the leaks and stopping them. But this winter, um, it's just 
not a one location. I've had a location we've had repairs done a year ago, the year before that. I'd say that's probably done a lot of times on a lot of roofs. But when I have it multiple places, and we do a, a exact, you know, trying to get the longevity out of it, but yes. You um, know me. I'm, I, 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 I don't understand. have a problem investing I know. in the infrastructure that we have, but this just seems the first time that I've heard of this. Um, Mr. Um, Wolfinger, what do we have? I knew you were asking. <laughs> All right. Well, you know where I'm going with it. $75,000. Say again? We have $575,000. In the, right in the uh, capital improvement? Okay. All right. So we have about 50000 in rent on that top floor that goes into the 320 fund. So. Yeah. Um. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Thank you. Forgive my ignorance, but is that a flat roof? Yes, it is. Do and you know it slopes from south to north. We do have two air conditioner units up on top. And we got a uh, scape hatch that gets you up on the roof on there. So. Okay. It's a, it's a steel on the trusses. It's a steel metal base. <coughs> so we have two layers of roof on top of there. So. Okay. Thank yes. you. That was one of the questions I was going to ask as well. Is that a rubber roof as in addition? Currently right there. Yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm really looking at it. We've had really good success with our roof replacements in the past. Mike Nixon has brought several in and, and looking at the longevity of those. Uh, I don't want to, I want to go beyond just 15 years on a roof and I'm looking at 15 to 30 year and I see a $40,000 difference. So why spend 140 when I could go 180 and get a 30 year roof and a guarantee that as Mike Nixon has had in all his facilities, they are a, a company of their word. There were, you know, if there's any other issues that have happened. That answers my question. Thank you. I could tell you of other repairs that I'm making. I don't know how long you would like to go through that, <laughs> Mr. Stoughton. <laughs> but I, I, he has a valid point because a lot of times when we have our kind of finance meeting internally, that's where we discuss that and get it on the list with our um, things that we talk about, Treasurer Wolfinger. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Martin? Okay. I see Mr. Martin. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to give a quick update on the uh, Rock Mill Corporate Park project. Uh, the, you will be starting to see some more activity here in the next few weeks out at the Magna site. And uh, the last project was the bridge. They should be mobilizing here in the next week or so and driving pile and starting the last project. And then once the weather breaks, all the final surfaces will be placed on all the differing roads. So. Uh, just keep an eye out for that as you'll see activity moving out there. So that's it. Thank you. Any other departmental updates? Okay, President Wall, I'll turn it over to you for tonight's meeting, correct? Thank you, Ms. Danauer. We have a couple things to work our way through tonight. Temporary resolution 23 20 is a resolution approving and authoring the execution of an agreement for bylaws for the higher risk transit pool is coming through economic development. Mr. Schoonover. Uh, that's what this says. Yeah, it should be public transit. Yeah. Public, work. public works. Sorry. Public transit. It says public, public works work. on this one, Mr. Schoonover. There you go. Um, as you all know or may not know, wow. Transit's part of the Ohio Transit Risk Pool, so uh, we're a voting member. Um, we need to, we're trying to, well, with this piece, we want to add an additional alternate voting member. So if Miss Woody's not available, Mr. Martin wouldn't be available, then. Um, so we're, we're asking to appoint uh, Chaz. I was getting there. Okay. I didn't know if you were. You know, oh, you're oh, good. No, Go no, ahead. That's, that's right. Go ahead. You know it all anyway. Go ahead. I mean, in a good sense. <laughs> yeah. Now you got me all jacked up. Oh, sorry. So <laughs> this is to add an additional alternate and Miss Carter who uh, works at transit so she can attend the meetings if one of those two cannot. Okay, and your timing on this? Is that good, Paul? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Um I don't know when the first meeting is, but um, 
this is all can attend. Yeah. So one reading, suspension. We're not okay. really changing much. We're just adding another one. I'd like to get to carry some. Paul doesn't want to go to any meeting, so if we get the <laughs> third one Sorry. on there, he's good. So we'll suspend on this this evening, Mr. James. You'll please second. I will. All right. So we'll move ahead then with 2320 and suspension tonight. We move then to temporary ordinance 1-20, an ordinance to vacate a portion of Lowell Drive and all of Emerson Boulevard in Colonial Heights addition this coming through economic development, Mr. McDaniel. I looked over there and you weren't there. Yes, I, I've over moved. There now. I'm going to have to defer to the mayor, the safety director on this for more detail. Yeah, this is the, um, the, the proud plot of land directly behind the new Ohio Health Building on North Memorial Drive. And uh, it came before the Planning Commission at the, the last meeting, I believe, or the January meeting. And to uh, vacate this property, um, there have been, uh, I think, uh, Engineer Nolan said today, maybe a dozen or 15 attempts to develop this land. Uh, all have, uh, for not, none of them have been successful, and we have a developer at this point who appears prepared to do it. But this low drive kind of cuts that property in half, so they want to vacate that so they can build uh, what they plan to do. So Planning Commission has approved this, and now Council has to approve it uh, in order for it to be effective. Thank you, Mayor. And I'll just note quickly that though this is a vacation, a public hearing on this is not required because all of the abutting property owners have uh, agreed and or asked for this vacation to occur and so we do not need to have a public hearing on this particular piece of legislation. Mr. McDaniel, you have anything further on this? It looks like uh, we'll have a first reading on it tonight and then it, uh, it's being uh, recommended that go on the table until such time as other parts of the uh, process are completed. Is that right, Mr. Mayor? There was an email regarding. I, I believe that. I believe Engineer Nolan supports that. Okay. Position. Do you want to address that? Yeah. Um, so d during the planning commission um, uh, hearing, and, and I reached out to all of the utility departments, we have some inadequate sized easements on our sanitary sewer that run through the property. Um, before we vacate this right of way, uh, we've asked the developer to uh, give us adequate sized easements before that's vacated. Um, additionally, beyond that, I think you guys probably received some kind of a letter from Mr. Maholsky regarding this. That's a different issue, and uh, I, I don't really, uh, it, it, it doesn't make any difference to me as far as whether we uh, hold up for the rezoning part of it. So the rezoning of this property is actually going to be before uh, Planning Commission coming up in February 13th. Uh, it'll rezone. Uh, currently it exists as residential single family two, RS2. They're changing it to RM2 with a PUD overlay, planned unit development overlay. Um, so I think Mr. Maholsky's letter probably states that we asked the, that the vacation doesn't happen until the actual zoning goes through as well, not just the easements. Um, I, I'm, I don't lean one way or the other, but that's uh, that's what he's requesting. And, and there may be some fruit to that, um, you know, just making sure that we get what we need and what we want there when, when those vacations occur. Um, so that's I think that's what try to clarify the difference there because there's some stipulations, letters A through H or something in the legislation. So in the Planning Commission minutes, it was only about the easements. Yes. So. Right, it's fine. We just want to make sure that we're taken care of. Yes, correct. So the reality is we're going to have first reading on this tonight and then place it on the table specifically for the purpose right now of addressing the easement issue. And then this council can decide whether they'd want to take it off the table and move on it regarding the other issue at some point in the future. Yes, or you could have two readings and place it on the table then. Uh, whichever, it, it doesn't matter. That's fine. Yep. Okay, so we'll have first reading on this tonight then. You have a second? Uh, Mrs. Downer, would you second this? Yes. Thank you. Are there any questions about this? Mr. Ullum. Yeah, I just wanted to advise council that um, um, I know you received Mr. Mahalski's letter. Uh, I don't disagree with anything Engineer Nolan said. Um, just to let you know, though, that um, the rezoning is not a requirement for vacation. Just so you all know that. Right. From a uh, revised code standpoint. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Allen. 
further discussion or questions about this? So we'll have first reading on this this evening. I'll also quickly make note of our legislation. Uh, temporary Ordinance 32-19 will need to place on the table tonight. Um, Mr. Stoughton is still under you as the, as the primary sponsor here. So once this is read the third time, if we can place that on the table until such a time that the uh, election takes place and then we will deal with it appropriately at that point. Um, and then the other thing I'll just note is that in our last meeting in discussions regarding timber top property, there was discussion about how we would not be taking this up for vote consideration until that second meeting of February. Uh, due to an additional timing stipulation that was, I think, just overlooked as we went through this process, uh, there was a requirement of 30 days and then an additional requirement of 60 days after that. So technically it's 90 days. That will push any opportunity for us to vote on the timber top annexation legislation to our second meeting in March, which I think is like the 23rd or something. Is that right? Whatever that second one in March is, is when we will be pulling this from the table for, uh, for consideration. So just uh, a, a note for council that that will be the process as we work through um, the timber top legislation. With that, I'll turn it back to the chairwoman. Thank you, President Olds. Are there any other items to come for finance? Okay. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. This is Bob. I would like to make a motion that we adjourn. Okay. Uh, we are adjourned at 6.37 p.m. The regular meeting of Lancaster City Council will begin at 6.45. Almost everyone needs a car to get from point A to point B, and many families have two or more cars. At Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster, we specialize in hard-to-find used cars. Due to the recent success of the new car market, there is a large inventory of used cars available for resale. We can help you find exactly what you're looking for. With over 15 years at this location and 27 years experience in the business, we are the best place to go to find your next car, truck, van, or SUV. As a member of the Better Business Bureau, we are a Carfax Advantage dealer and offer great financing rates through a local area bank with warranties available on most vehicles. We know your time is valuable, so we take special pride in making sure that you get what you came for at a price that you can afford. Come into the carriage company and check out our sweet deals. Stop by today and let us help you or visit us online at carriagecompany.com. There is no place like Lancaster, Ohio and Fairfield County. And like you, I am proud to call them home. As a longtime resident of Lancaster and graduate of Lancaster High School, this community is important to me. And I want to provide superior customer service, professionalism, integrity and honesty at the Connor Insurance Agency. I am committed to supporting local programs and projects through my volunteer work and board membership with several organizations. It has been a great honor to work with all the first responders throughout Lancaster, Fairfield County, and the state of Ohio to put on Kids and Cops Day, to be a part of Shop with a Cop alongside the Lancaster Police Department and JFS, and to help Lancaster Public Education Foundation raise funds to support our local public schools and teachers. These men and women work hard to protect and support our community and I would like to take this moment to say thank you for all they do. My goal as a business owner and insurance agent is to provide my clients with the most appropriate services and coverage for their needs at a competitive rate. As an independent agent, I have several carriers to choose from so I can customize your insurance coverage to fit your needs and desires. I strive to make sure there are no gaps in your coverage that could be harmful and just as important that you are not overinsured. I look forward to serving your insurance needs now and in the future. At Connor Insurance, we are here to serve you by protecting what is important to you. Please contact my office at 740-654-2848 for a full list of services and carriers or visit my website, connorinsuranceagency.com. The Frankie e. Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. 
feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. I hereby call this meeting of Lancaster City Council to order. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt. Here. Mrs. Downauer. Here. Mr. Hall. Here. Mr. James. Here. Mr. Matlin. Here. Mr. McDaniel. Here. Mr. Schoonover. Here. Mr. Stoughton. Here. And Mrs. Teener. Here. Let the record reflect that all nine members of Lancaster City Council are in attendance this evening. Reading and disposing of the journal. I'd like to present the regular meeting minutes dated January 13th, 2020, and the Council of the Whole meeting minutes dated January 13th, 2020. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the journal. Second. We have a motion and a second to receive and file the journal. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Are there reports of city officials? There are. Email dated January 14, 2020 regarding follow-up from City Engineer Office Public Hearings. Um, so submitted by City Engineer Mitch Nolan, email dated January 14, 2020, regarding the signage on Columbus Bush Hill, submitted by Service Safety Director Paul Martin, email dated January 17, 2020, regarding meeting dates for Service Committee meeting dates, double did that, submitted by Mrs. Teener, email dated January 17, 2020, regarding meeting dates for water, water pollution control, submitted by Mr. James. Email dated January 17, 2020, regarding Walter Beatty Storage Facility, submitted by Mayor David Scheffler. Email dated January 17, 2020, regarding Memorial Drive Turn Lane, submitted by Mayor David Scheffler. Email dated January 21, 2020, regarding Code Enforcement Committee meeting dates, submitted by Mr. Matlin. Email dated January 20, 2020. January 21st, 2020, regarding CDBG activities report submitted by Executive Director uh, Mary Jo Smith. Email dated January 23rd, 2020, regarding Public Works Committee meeting, meeting dates submitted by Mr. Schoonover. Series of emails regarding Service Committee meeting dates submitted by Mrs. Teener. Email dated January 23rd, 2020, regarding Electric Aggregation Info on City webpage submitted by Service Safety Director Paul Martin. Email dated January 26, 2020, regarding January 27, 2020, Finance Committee uh, agenda submitted by Mrs. Downauer. Email dated January 27, 2020, regarding the State of the City invite submitted by Mayor David Scheffler. Email dated January 27, 2020, regarding Temporary Resolution 23-20 submitted by Mr. Mr. Stoughton. And finally, an email dated January 27, 2020, regarding the Finance Committee agenda submitted by Mr. Stoughton. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the reports of city officials. Second. We have a motion and a second to receive and file reports of city officials. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. <laughs> motion carries. Are there any communications? There are. Series of emails regarding petition report <coughs> received submitted by Lauren Peterson. Email dated January 24, 2020 regarding temporary ordinance 1-20 submitted by attorney Ray Mahalski. Email dated January 26, 2020 regarding timber top annexation rezoning submitted by Stephen Neff, 1976 Cold Spring Drive, Lancaster. Certification packet of approval of the timber top annexation from the Fairfield County Board of Commissioners received on January 22, 2020, submitted by Rachel Elsa, clerk for the Fairfield County Commissioners. And finally, an email dated January 27, 2020, regarding stormwater runoff on Bush Hill Drive, submitted by Robert G. Conley, 1624 Bush Hill Drive, Lancaster. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the communications. Second. We have a motion and a second to receive and file communications. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. There are no special presentations or awards tonight. Are there any petitions or memorials? A petition protesting the proposed rezoning and annexation of Timber Top, signed by 117 individuals received on January 27, 2020. A copy of the petition is posted online under petitions and available by contacting the clerk. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the petition. Second. We have a motion and a second to receive and file the petition. 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. During this portion of Lancaster City Council, we set time aside for the voters and taxpayers of Lancaster to address City Council on any item or issue you would like. If you're interested in addressing Lancaster City Council tonight, we invite you to come forward to the podium. State your name and address for the record and sign in with the same at the podium on the clipboard. Please note that unlike last meeting during our public hearing, that comments tonight are restricted to five minutes or less. In addition, members of City Council will not respond to you during this portion of the meeting, though they may choose to do so at a later portion. Let me just also note that for those of you who may be here to speak about Timbertop, the floor will be open, and if you choose to do so, you can. But at this time, we understand there is opposition. We have received your petitions, we have received your letters, we have received your emails when we spent four and a half hours at our meeting two weeks ago hearing your concerns. We understand them, we gather the nature of them, and it might be my suggestion that a more nuanced way to impress your opinion upon City Council members is to not reiterate the same concerns that were brought up previously, but to perhaps bring any new information that you may have over the last couple of weeks that you would like to discuss. That being said, as we did at the last meeting, no one will be precluded from speaking tonight. And so is there anyone who would like to address City Council on any item or issue this evening? Mr. Mahalski. Good evening. My name is Ray Mahalski. I'm a local attorney and I uh, rise to address uh, temporary ordinance 1-20, which is the vacation of Lowell Drive. Uh, purpose of me speaking on this, I represent Windsor Plaza, which owns the Ohio Health Building on Memorial Drive, which adjoins and abuts abut the portion of Lowell Drive that has not been proposed for vacation. It's right at the mouth, it's mouth right at the Memorial Drive. The reason that we want this, we're asking that this be tabled until the development for the flats is approved rather than doing it prematurely. It could be we want Lowell Drive to remain in existence if this plan fails. Uh, I know that Mr. Nolan had indicated that the upper end of Lowell Drive that comes out on Columbus, that, that's a busy traffic area. It's a busy traffic area on Memorial Drive too, and one way of handling that, if you take a look at the proposed plans, they've got a structure there for it to be just right in and right out. Same thing could be done on the Columbus, right in, right out. In addition, there was some discussion about the need for an expensive bridge at the Columbus end. I would just point out that that was not an impediment to platting it in the first place, and that alone should not be an impediment or not, not be a reason for vacating that you need an expensive bridge. That cost of that can be passed on to a developer uh, and the right in and right out would alleviate the traffic concern uh, that Mr. Nolan, I missed his remarks, but that he expressed to me about the traffic on Columbus. Uh, <clears throat> we think that the uh, that connector should remain in place so that if the present proposal does not get approved, you know, someone else could come by and make use of that. Because I think it's I think it's a valuable asset. My clients think it's a valuable asset. And we just ask that someone make a uh, motion uh, to amend the uh, ordinance, as I pointed out in my letter to council, uh, to provide for rezoning and the other things needed to approve the, the plat for the flats. I think there would be no harm in doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahalski. Yes, please be sure you sign in there. Is there anyone else who would like to address Lancaster City Council this evening? Yes, sir. Well, Robert Huffman, 1580 Woodland Heights Lane Northwest, uh, speaking on the timber top proposal. I've been warned by Mr. Ward that I must be very quick. And with your entry, I will do so. Uh, much of this has been covered. 
but I really want to reiterate um, uh, our great concern now with more time to process to look into this is the fact that uh, each time the proponents, the Lemon Group has, for, uh, I guess, presented their proposal as to what they're going to be doing there, more and more changes. Uh, it's pretty obvious that they do not have a completed development. Uh, many of these pieces will not be done by them. They will be sold off to other people which have been yet to be identified. Um, we're asking that all of the uh, zoning approval and the annexation not occur until after they actually present a more detailed and finalized development plan uh, that will allow you to assess the number of units in there, what that effect will be on the city, on the residents in this area, and um, be able to better also then an analyze the traffic study based upon what will actually be in there and not uh, a conjecture as to what may or may not be put in that space. Uh, finally, we'd also like to um, find out what the cost to Lancaster will be with this development. And I think you need to know what they're proposing, what they're planning, what will have to happen traffic-wise to be able to analyze that also. Uh, finally, I have a question. Uh, I was told by several people, which I was not aware, and it has not been brought up in any of the discussion, that it is a requirement that there will have to be low-income housing in that area. I wanted to know if I could get an answer or, or determination on that. Not during this portion of the meeting, you can't, okay. but uh, at another time, the council members may choose to address you or after the meeting, folks okay. may be able to, to address that question. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to address Lancaster City Council this evening? Oh, Miss Burnside. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Diane Wogan Burnside. I reside at Quail Meadows <coughs> in Lancaster. And I am here to discuss Timber Top, but I have a couple little extra things that I found in some of my research. Back on May 24th of 2017, General Sherman Junior High School had thought about purchasing that property for the same $1.7 million. However, even though it's a beautiful setting, it would have been a beautiful site, it was stated that it would have been too costly to develop due to utility and road access issues. At the Planning Commission on Thursday, November the 14th of 2019, Mr. Nolan stated that the property would primarily access a roadway connecting to Columbus Street. There's also a planned roadway to Hawthorne. And additionally, a street stub will be left at the north end of the property to tie into River Valley Highlands if and when the rest of section 13 is developed. Now I believe I was sitting here in these chambers when the ending of development in River Valley Highlands has taken place because they have hit shell and that particular section will not be developed. So will I assume from that that there will be no access to River Valley Highlands from that particular area. I realized that there was a traffic study, but I have been unable to access that to be able to review what you've been given at the very last meeting. Um, Mrs. Collins asked at that zoning committee if this was going to be a proposed PUD, a planned unit development, and they said that it was not going to be using a PUD overlay. Now, if I understand correctly, a PUD overlay allows developers additional flexibility while developing the property but the developers need to determine at the beginning of the process exactly how their site would be developed and must commit to that design if approved. However, without the PUD, developers have the ability to build whatever kind of development they want, as long as it's allowable and they comply with city requirements. So I have to also state that when they talked about tying it in to get to Tar Heel Trail School, again, you're attaching to a part of the River Valley Highlands <coughs> that would not be developed. So there will not be access to River Valley Highlands through that section. Um, I'm a little concerned with the fact that this property changed hands in December prior to you even looking at this case and saying whether you're going to pass it or not. Um, they, when the developers were asked how they thought the development would look, and any of these details would come out prior to the approval, they were not available. At that time, Safety Service Director Martin stated that it's hard for developers to spend the time and money on final designs without zoning being confirmed. And again, it's interesting because they already own the property. 
Mayor Scheffler noted that some of the proposed facilities in this area originated from the city's economic development in an attempt to provide an area that could serve for various different city needs. The mayor has reiterated that they want to see it with a CG zoning so that if skilled nursing did not ultimately go into that site, it could be opened up to a wider variety of potential users. Now, I have to ask, did someone make promises to this development for them to change hands of ownership in December before you've even had a chance to vote on it one way or the other? It was interesting that the meeting with the county commissioners who passed this to go in, Steve Davis said, there's no evidence of detriment to the township when he was asked why the commission approved the annexation. The evidence that we received was of potential deterrent to the city of Lancaster. And we were advised by legal counsel that that's not a consideration under statute. So I am stating that I would like for you to take a look at this very closely before you vote because there's a lot of underlying issues that are suspicious to me. And there are four possible actions that can be taken. Approve as submitted, approve as amended, approve subject to modification and denial. Please listen to the concerns of those citizens that live in this area that have been paying taxes to the city of Lancaster for a long time, who vote and elect those that are sitting here. Well, some of you, we are elect you. Other people elect some of you others, depending on your ward. And please answer some of the questions of suspicion of this project. Transparency. That is your time, Ms. Wilkin Burnside. Vote for the best interest of those that live in the area. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address Lancaster City Council this evening? <coughs> Can you all hear me? I couldn't hear some of the comments, that's why I'm asking that. Uh, in certainly the past 50 years, perhaps more, a measure before Lancaster City Council to annex 76.877 acres into the city limits is huge. If passed on, now I understand it to be the second meeting in March, is that when the vote will be taken? No one's going to respond to you during this time oh, as I'm given sorry. in the instructions. Well, I, that's what I understand. I'm sorry that I asked the question. If passed on uh, Mar the second meeting in March, Lemon developers from North Canton will have incredible opportunities for commercial, multifamily, new homes, and commercial resi residential to be built. Sounds great, doesn't it? Only a not in my backyard mentality would see reasons why this should not happen. It is great progress for the city with, of course, tax revenue in the offering. But sadly, the city will be signing a blank check for years to come. A vote of no on annexation is a must, and there are important reasons why. First of all, as Bob Huffman said, we really don't clearly understand what the developers plan to do with the acreage. There is a large portion of, of timber top. If you have been to the property and looked at it, as I have, a large part of the tract of, of acreage is pasture. Pasture meaning grass. I wonder what's under that grass, geologically. Could it be developed? Could other portions of that land be developed? Has Lemon done a geological study so we know, so you know what in fact can be developed? I think that there needs to be a detailed plan of what is 
going to be done there on the land. And I, I think the citizens of Lancaster need an explanation. Um, finally, in my last probably minute, uh, I would like to say that without this meaning a threat, but the legacy of this city council is, I think, of most importance. The last remaining acreage, if you think of it in terms of Lancaster, for very special development rather than brick and mortar um, is before you in terms of a decision. I've had many people astounded that that acreage could not be served as a park, probably the most special final park in the city limits. Uh, it would enhance city property values. It would give children and adults a reason to go to North Columbus <coughs> Street and enjoy what beauty is there uh, without the city involved with perhaps untold financial obligations to widen or Correct. with infrastructure develop North Columbus Street. I haven't talked to many people who are for this. I've talked to probably 90% who are astounded that this is before City Council. And I do still question and have not the answers to anyone and myself as to why Lemon developers purchased the property with it not being annexed and without the zoning to do what they intend to do. I simply do not understand this. And someday maybe someone can give me an explanation that will settle right for me. Thank you. Thank you. If you'll please state your name and address for the record and sign in as the same. Okay. State it first. Please, sir. Oh, okay. It's Lauren Peterson, River Valley Highlands, 1101 Green Meadow Avenue. Thank you. I think Mr. Mahalski has the clipboard there if you wouldn't mind to sign in. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Marty Stover, 406 Scott Drive. I just wanted to um, encourage everyone in this room to come through my neighborhood, which is off of Whittier Drive, and just drive around. Look at what my neighborhood is. It's a quiet, peaceful area, one way in, one way out, no sidewalks. I would also encourage everyone in this room to go up to Old Ridge Court and look at where they intend on putting the stub up there and look at that neighborhood as well and see what detriment you are going to do to each community when you open those up. I was under the impression the other day I had not been up to see the storage units yet. I was under the impression that the city was not, had nothing to do with these storage units. And to my dismay, I drive up the, the road and I'm like, what the heck? They've used a stub and opened up a stub. So now they have access via the city. Now, how did that happen? I thought the city said, no way, we're not doing anything for you. We don't want you there. We, don't, we didn't want you in the in our city, so I, I, I have no words. So I encourage every one of you in this room to go up and visit these two neighborhoods that are gonna be affected the most. Because I was astounded, especially in the River Valley area, at what is gonna happen. And Hawthorne Drive is, I mean, we have no sidewalks in our neighborhood. I know we've told you this before. We, where are we gonna walk? We have a school. Where are the ki the kids walk to bus stops? You know, in the morning. And now we're going to have thorough traffic going through our neighborhood with detriment to the the kids walk. You know, standing there with the you know no sidewalks. I, I I'm a, I, I just get more confused the more I I think about this. And the environmental study. I mean. There's wetlands over there. I, are we allowed to disrupt wetlands? I thought wetlands, when they happened, were, you know, against the law that you couldn't, 
do anything about it. My daughter went to lives on um, Cold Spring Drive, went out to get in her car the other day, and there was um, an egret bird underneath her awning on, her, on the side of her house because she has a creek beside. We have all kinds of wildlife. You're going to take all, of, all that away when all this building starts. I just want everyone just to realize once we start this process and it goes through, there's no turning back. So I encourage everyone to visit the sites that are going to, if you're not familiar with the neighborhoods, to please, please check them out. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, ma'am. Please be sure you sign in. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else who would like to address Lancaster City Council this evening? Well, thanks to each of you for being here tonight. Are there reports of standing committees? There are none to be presented. <clears throat> there are no reports of special committees, and there are no public hearings scheduled for this evening, so we'll move to the reading of resolutions, beginning with the third reading of Temporary Resolution 145-19. A resolution to authorize the Service Safety Director to advertise for bids and to enter into a construction agreement for the improvement project known as the 2020 Street Improvement Paving Project, offered by Mr. Schoonover, second by Mrs. Bobbitt. Mr. Schoonover. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 145-19. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 145-19. Discussion, Mr. Schoonover. Uh, this is our resolution um, uh, put out by engineering for uh, our yearly street paving program for 2020. Very good. Further discussion on the motion to pass. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Matlin? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Temporary Resolution 145-19 passes 9-0. to zero. Temporary Resolution 146-19. A resolution authorizing the Service Safety Director to advertise for bids for the Memorial Drive Culvert Repair Project. Offered by Mr. Hall, second by Mr. McDaniel. Mr. Hall. Yes, Mr. President, I would like to make a motion that Council pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution number 146-19. Second. We have a motion in the second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 146-19. Mr. Hall. Yeah, this is um, basically a rebid of the culvert project. Um, on a memorial at the intersection of, um, I believe, Whittier, where uh, Pier 1 is. Um, the previous bid came in at higher uh, than what we had expected or what was allowed for, so we're just rebidding uh, that project. Thank you very much, Mr. Hall. Further discussion on the motion to pass? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Matlin? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. And Mrs. Teener? Yes. Temporary Resolution 146-19 passes 9-0. to zero. Temporary Resolution 149-19. A resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a LPA federal local let project agreement with the state of Ohio Department of Transportation for the purpose of construction of the FAI CR 5404.90 Fair Avenue Roadway Improvements High Street to Sheridan Drive, offered by Mr. Schoonover, second by Mrs. Bobbitt. Mr. Schoonover. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 14919. Second. We have a motion in the second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 149-19. Discussion, Mr. Schoonover. Uh, this fantastic piece allows us to get moving on spending some state dollars on repaving uh, Fair Avenue from High Street to Sheridan Drive, which we should all be jumping up and down for joy. True indeed. Further discussion on the motion to pass? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Matlin? Yes. Mr. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. And Mrs. Teener? Yes. We get a little jump, Mr. Schoonover? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Temporary resolution 149-19 passes 9-0. to zero. Temporary resolution 151-19. A resolution authorizing the service safety director and Lancaster Department of Transportation superintendent to engage in an interdepartmental loan for the construction of a <clears throat> fixed canopy over the Lancaster Fuel Depot as required by the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency. 
offered by Mr. Schoonover, second by Mrs. Bobbitt. Mr. Schoonover. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 151-19. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 151-19. Mr. Schoonover. Yep, this piece is to allow um, the transportation department to borrow money from another department. So the EPA is requiring us to cover the fuel depot gas pumps. So this loan will allow that to happen from one department to the other. Thank you, Mr. Schoonover. Further discussion on the motion to pass? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. This is an old sheet. They put it backwards. I apologize. Okay. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Matlin? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. And Mrs. Teener? Yes. Give me just one second. Temporary resolution 151-19 passes 9 to 0. We now have second reading on a series of on one resolution, temporary resolution 8-20. A resolution to decrease increase appropriations in the general fund 101. Offered by Mrs. Downauer, second by Mrs. Bobbitt. Mrs. Downauer. Second and three readings, please. Second reading on temporary resolution 8-20. We now have first reading on a series of resolutions beginning with temporary resolution 15-20. A resolution authorizing the law director's office to apply for the Violence Against Women Act grant. Offered by Mrs. Downauer, second by Mrs. Bobbitt. Ms. Downauer. First of three readings, please. First reading on temporary resolution 15-20. Temporary resolution 16-20. A resolution authorizing the disposition of city property no longer needed via auction or internet auctions for 2020. Offered by Mrs. Downauer, second by Mr. Stoughton. Ms. Downauer. First of three readings, please. First reading on temporary resolution 16-20. Temporary resolution 17-20. A resolution to allow the Lancaster City Auditor to request an advance of funds from Fairfield County of the City's apportionment of tax settlements for 2020. Offered by Mrs. Downauer, second by Mrs. Bobbitt. Ms. Downauer. First of two readings, please. First of two readings on temporary resolution 17-20. Temporary resolution 18-20. A resolution to author a resolution authorizing the service safety director to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the purchase of salt for use by the water department. Offered by Mr. James, second by Mrs. Teener. Mr. James. This will be the first of three readings. First of three readings on temporary resolution 18-20. Temporary resolution 19-20. A resolution authorizing the service safety director to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the purchase of phosphate for use by the water department. Offered by Mr. James, second by Mr. Hall. Mr. James. Once again, first of three readings. First of three readings on temporary resolution 19-20. Temporary resolution 20-20. A resolution to amend the certificate with the county auditor appropriate from the unencumbered balance increase receipts and complete a fund transfer in the wastewater fund 604 and in the wastewater utility reserve fund 629 offered by mr. James second by mrs. Teener mr. James once again this is the first of three readings for this first reading on temporary resolution 20-20 temporary resolution 21-20 a resolution authorizing the Lancaster Police Department to apply for the 2020 through 2021 Drug Use Prevention Grant. Offered by Mrs. Bobbitt, second by Mr. McDaniel. Ms. Bobbitt. Thank you. Um, we heard from Chief Pillard during finance. Um, this is pretty straightforward, um, so I don't think we need to call him up right now unless he wants to come up. He wants to. He will explain to us what this annual piece is for and why we need to suspend tonight. Yeah, good evening. This is uh, essentially we have to request uh, permission from the legislative body to even put in this grant. This is reimbursement money for when our DARE officers go into the schools to teach DARE. So it's money that the city gets back for time spent teaching anti-drug messages. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. So uh, tonight I'd like to suspend on this and I hope uh, all the other council members will also. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council suspend its rules and waive the second and third reading of temporary resolution number 2120. Second. 
We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and waive the second and third reading of temporary resolution 21-20. Further discussion, Ms. Bobbitt? Nothing further, thank uh, you. Other discussion on the motion to suspend? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Matlin? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Motion to suspend passes 9-0. to zero. Ms. Bobbitt. Thank you. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution number 2120. Second. A motion and a second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 21-20. Discussion, Ms. Bobbitt? Nothing further. Discussion on the motion to pass. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Matlin? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. And Mrs. Teener. Yes. Temporary resolution 21-20 passes 9-0. to zero. Temporary resolution 22-20. A resolution authorizing the service safety director to enter into an agreement with ODOT to purchase sodium chloride rock salt for the 2020 through 2021 winter season. Offered by Mr. Schoonover, second by Mrs. Downauer. Mr. Schoonover. Uh, this is the first of two readings, please. First of two readings on temporary resolution 22-20. Temporary resolution 23-20. A resolution approving the and authorizing the execution of an agreement and bylaws by the Ohio Transit Risk Pool. Offered by Mr. Schoonover, second by Mr. James. Mr. Schoonover. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that Council suspend its rules and waive the second and third readings of temporary resolution 2320. Mr. James. I second that. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and waive the second and third reading of temporary resolution 23-20. Mr. Schoonover. Uh, yeah, this piece is uh, accepting membership into the transit risk pool for public transit. Uh, and then the bigger piece of this is to appoint an alternate trustee to vote at the, tran at the risk pool meeting. So we, um, if transit director Woody cannot attend or service safety director Martin cannot attend, then the assistant transit director would be able to attend and vote uh, for us at those meetings. Very good. Further discussion on the motion to suspend? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Matlin? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. And Mrs. Teener? Yes. Motion to suspend carries 9 to 0. Mr. Schoonover? Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 2320. Second. Mr. James? Second. We have a motion and a second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record, temporary resolution 23-20. Further discussion, Mr. Schoonover? Well, thank you. Other discussion on the motion to pass? Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Matlin? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. And Mrs. Teener? Yes. Temporary resolution 23-20 passes 9-0. Temporary resolution 24-20. A resolution to appropriate from the unencumbered balance and amend the certificate with the county auditor in the general fund 101. Offered by Mrs. Downauer, second by Mr. Stoughton. Mrs. Downauer. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council suspend its rules and waive the second and third reading of res resolution temporarily number 24-20. Second. We have a motion in the second to suspend the rules and waive the second and third reading of temporary resolution 24-20. Ms. Downauer. Uh, yes, this is a resolution so that we can get the, um, sorry. This is the resolution to make the improvements to Steve Stiver's office. Um, it will actually be reimbursed to the city through the increased rent. Very good. Further discussion on the motion to suspend. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Matlin? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Motion to suspend passes 9 to 0. Ms. Downauer? Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council pass and gross and enter upon the written record resolution temporarily numbered 24 20. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record temporary resolution 24 20. Further discussion, Ms. Downauer? No, thank you. Other discussion on the motion to pass? Yes, Ms. Tina. I wanted to, because I don't think you mentioned it, it was for security reasons, isn't that right? Yes. yes. So that's what yes. the improvement was. Yes. Further discussion on the motion to pass? Please call the roll. 
Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Matlin? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. And Mrs. Teener? Yes. Temporary Resolution 24-20 passes 9-0. to zero. Temporary Resolution 25-20. A resolution authorizing the service safety director to advertise for bids for the broad mulberry sewer separation project offered by mr james second by mr hall mr james this is the first uh, the uh, first of three readings first of three readings on temporary resolution 25-20 temporary resolution 26-20 a resolution to appropriate from the unencumbered balance and amend the certificate with the county auditor in the general fund offered by Mrs. Downauer, second by Mr. Stoughton. Ms. Downauer. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council suspend its rules and waive the second and third reading of resolution temporarily numbered 26-20. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and waive the second and third reading of temporary resolution 26-20. Discussion, Ms. Downauer. Uh, not on the suspension. Discussion on suspending. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Matlin? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. And Mrs. Teener? Yes. Motion to suspend passes 9 to 0. Ms. Downauer? Yes. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council pass and gross and enter upon the written record. Resolution temporarily numbered 26 20. Second. We have a motion and second to pass and gross and enter upon the written record. Temporary resolution 26 20. Discussion, Ms. Downauer? Uh, yes, I would like to defer to the mayor, if he doesn't mind, to give us a, this is for the grant writer um, first quarter fee, if you could give the details. Yeah, this is simply a change to the budget to accommodate the transition of our independent contractor grant writer to uh, be executive director of the community development department uh, and allows us to come into compliance with the wage and hour rules for that transition. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Further. further discussion on the motion to pass. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Matlin? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. And Mrs. Teener? Yes. Motion to pass. I'm sorry. Temporary resolution 26 20 passes 9 to 0. Are there any further resolutions to come before Lancaster City Council this evening? <coughs> If not, we'll move to the reading of ordinances, beginning with the third reading of temporary ordinance 32-19. An ordinance to amend section 183.012, 183.013, and 183.02 of the codified ordinances of the City of Lancaster, Ohio, in order to provide for the levying of an additional 45 hundredths of 1%, 045 percent income tax, effective January 1st, 2021, on the salaries, wages, commissions, and other compensation subject to the municipal income tax with all such tax to be used for the purpose of operating, maintaining, repairing, and providing capital facilities for the fire and police department for the city and to declare an emergency offered by Mr. Stoughton, second by Mr. McDaniel. Mr. Stoughton. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to make, to make a motion that council place ordinance temporary 3219 on the table, please. Second. We have a motion and a second to place on the table temporary ordinance 32-19. This is a non-debatable motion. Please call the roll. Mrs. Bobbitt? Yes. Mrs. Downauer? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Matlin? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mr. Schoonover? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. Mrs. Teener? Yes. Temporary Ordinance 32-19 is placed upon the table and will remain there until after the, no uh, well, March election um, this, this coming spring. We have no res ordinances for second reading. We do have temporary ordinance 1-20 for first reading. An ordinance to vacate a portion of Lowell Drive and all Emerson Boulevard within John D. Van Gundy's revision of the Colonial Heights edition and to declare an emergency. Offered by Mr. McDaniel, second by Mrs. Downauer. Mr. McDaniel. First of three readings. First reading on temporary ordinance 1-20. Temporary ordinance 2-20. An ordinance to amend ordinance 25-19, repeal and replace existing 25-19, and declare an emergency for the transit pay ordinance. Offered by Mr. Schoonover, second by Mrs. Downauer. Mr. Schoonover. Well, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that council suspend its rules and waive the second and third readings of temporary ordinance 2-20. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and waive the second and third reading of temporary ordinance 2-20. Discussion, Mr. Schoonover. Uh, yeah, as brought up in um, finance, as we transition uh, transit over um, 
we found the need, Transit Director Woody's found the need for a second lead operator with not only our extended hours, but um, you know, having everything in house. So this is going to add a second lead operator, get uh, Director Woody back down to somewhat normal working hours schedule, um, and then it all fits within uh, their current budget that we've already approved. So there's no new money here. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. This James. is a question for Engineer Nolan again. I'm sorry, I don't mean to make you come back to the podium. But two things. Uh, first of all, are you aware of any geolog geological study that might have been conducted on Timber Top thus far? I am not aware of any that the developer has taken place yet, that they've taken any soil borings or anything like that. Yeah. And the second issue that was brought up was wetlands. If you destroy any wetlands there, to my understanding, they have to establish them somewhere else on the property? So there's, uh, there's, this is the environmental part that I know a little bit about here. So th there are certain types of, uh, you, can, you can destroy a certain amount of wetlands under what you call a nationwide permit, which is under, uh, there's the 401 and 404 permitting process, which is part of the Clean Water Act. And so if you stay under a certain amount of acreage and you stay within these certain confines of whatever is delineated as wetlands and it has to be officially delineated as a wetland from a certified uh, wetland person and uh, they delineate that and if, it's, if you actually uh, destroy a wetland that's below a certain acreage and you stay within a nationwide permit, that's, an, that's a simpler, easier permit. If it goes beyond a certain acreage, and I don't know those limits, it goes into, I think, what they call 401 clean water permit, which is an EPA permit, and there's more stringent uh, regulations with that. Then you have to do purchase wetlands from a different credit somewhere else, similar to maybe like a streams and wetland uh, consultant that has wetlands in another watershed. It's, it's it's a process that developers are very familiar with. Mr. Mayor? To your knowledge, are there any delineated wetlands on that property? I do not know of any. Because I have one question that's a follow-up to Mr. Jean. Sure. Go ahead. So, Mr. Nolan, so um, no developer in their right mind would basically, well, they're not going to start tearing that land up until they obviously do their uh, geological survey. So they could have just spent whatever they spent you know, yeah. million, almost $2 million on a piece of property that they cannot develop. That's potentially. Yeah. They are betting that the fact that that's not the case. I'm sure they probably have had consultants already look yes. at this, and they, know, and they know what's out there, and they know what they have, and they know what they, if they have to destroy some or they have to mitigate some or whatever it is, they do that. When I was in the private sector, it was done all the time. Anytime there was extreme crossing, we stayed within a certain nationwide permit threshold. It, it's, it's the game that's played with, uh, with 401, 404 committee. Thank you. But again, you don't know of any that exist? I do not know of any. I've never seen a study. I've never seen what they're, any consultants. I have no knowledge of any of that. Thank you. Further, well, Mr. Ollum. I will rescind my prior statement and answer your question. Um, we can, the township zoning can continue on until the city establishes new zoning. The annexation? Uh, I'm sorry, the annexation, I'm sorry. So, yes, if that should happen that, you know, the, the property is annexed into the city, but the um, ordinance establishing zoning um, would fail, then uh, the annexation has still occurred or whatever, and they can still work on okay. the zoning. Thank you, Mr. So yeah, and so you, what you're saying is then zoning is whatever it is currently. Zoning would continue as what the township has right. zoned. Got it. Right. Very good. Thank you. That was quick, Mr. Holm. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Ms. Bobby. Well, it was back to my original question. So, so if the zoning portion didn't pass, then I said, does it have to go back to planning committee then? Yeah, again, if it would fail here, the only thing, I mean, off the top of my head, you have the motion for reconsideration. Um, is a possibility at the next meeting of council, where if that would have failed, then yes, back to plan. Okay. Stand up. So just to make sure that I'm clear, if we vote no on the annexation, as someone out in the audience had requested, 
the annexation would go down and the property would still stay in the hands of Greenfield Township. Is that correct? Well, it would be in the hands of the new owner, but it would be in Greenfield Township. In Greenfield Township. So they would govern that property. Um, in a sense. The regulated, yes. The regulated. It would be regulated okay. by Greenfield Township regulations, okay. yes. And so the idea of a park, if you will, if it's not annexed into the city, it's not under city governance. That's correct. So in reality, it wouldn't be a city park, uh, right? That, that's correct. Oh, well, yeah, that's correct. Yes. Okay. Yes, that Just is correct. Just wanted to make sure. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Donna. Our further discussion... Yeah. Yes, Mr. McDaniel. I just have one comment. I thinking of the question we were asked earlier uh, that we couldn't answer, and, and I, this is not an answer. But uh, the only people that know why they purchased that property and closed on it in December would be the seller and the purchaser. No one else would know. We can all speculate as to why someone may have done something, but I would ask the Lemon Group why they purchased that property and closed on it. They would be the only ones with the correct answer. I think that's a great suggestion and, and uh, yeah because no one here is going to be able to say why they did what they did so what, one final comment yes mr. Tobin so mr. all just because you're the legal scholar of legal guidance here <laughs> I'm not gonna throw a curveball at you so Greenville Township in theory could if, if we didn't if we didn't annex in and we didn't uh, approve uh, zoning for that annexation Greenfield Township I mean they could basically still do the same development in Greenfield Township is that correct Mm, uh, I mean, they probably, would just have to provide. Probably know. not. They'd have to what, find a way to provide the services or whatever necessary for whatever development sure. went in there. Yes. But in theory, it could happen. Uh, possibly, I guess. Possibly, yes. Uh, the city, I guess, would have to. I, what I would see is the city would have to enter into some sort of agreement to provide those services. And that's Someone perfectly acceptable. Y yes, yes. I mean, uh, um, absolutely. The city actually provides some, uh, as I understand it, some services um, outside the city right now. Um, the other thing, too, is it's my understanding uh, from the utility departments that, um, you know, since this is an island of Greenfield Township surrounded by the city, um, that utilities going through that property would give, I guess, the gas department. Mayor, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but the gas department, maybe the water department, some... Um, redundancy as I understand it or whatever to uh, loops is that loops. am I, am loops, I correct right. in that or whatever so so I mean that would something that also benefiting the utility might play into the provision of those services okay. thank you You're welcome. yes mr. May. I might add that uh, the city declined to provide water and sewer services to the Beatty storage unit in Greenfield Township went ahead and approved that and apparently the construction is ongoing so that enterprise has found some way to get services out there and I would suggest that maybe the same thing could happen uh, with the Timbertop property. Very good. Mr. Schoonover. Just to piggyback off of those because I had brought up the Greenfield Township Thing last time I did look at the last or one of the Greenfield Township trustee meeting their set of minutes and they they did bring up timber top and the utilities and you know even if it were to cost that they were you know if it they're three quarters of a mile away or something like that it could cost them two and a half million dollars but if I mean we're all sitting here figuring none of us in this room would take a 1.7 million dollar flyer on a piece of property you don't know if you can develop but if they're willing to take that flyer, then it's not really a far leap to say, hey, Greenfield Township will pay the $2.5 million if you can get us utilities. Because then that backs up to Diane uh, brought up earlier, you know, Lancaster City Schools was looking at that property to purchase, and then they changed their mind, and that's because they realized that developing it with the utilities needed would be too expensive and you know they're spending public dollars so that comes into play a little more than private companies uh, again taking taking million dollar flyers I mean it, it's that's that would be my concern is if we have no control over it what's gonna happen thank you mr. Schoonover. further unfinished business this evening Ms. 
So um, one of the um, concerns was, you know, we've not seen what these developers have built. And so asking our uh, legal uh, guru, um, what, if we wanted to essentially go take a road trip and see one of the developments that they've already got freestanding in Akron Canton area, what what's the rules around that so that we could actually see the facility that they built in the past? My advice, I guess, would not be to take a group field trip because uh, that becomes a you know, I mean, that's a public meeting. I mean, I, if you do that, I guess understand that it would have to be noticed in a public meeting um, as to where you're going. And I don't know where all their developments are, but if the closest one is a couple, you know, hours away, um, um, you know, the other thing is if you go in, you know, in, in, in groups, um, the issue is always the transparency of it and whether or not you're violating um, the open meeting laws. And so, um, and, and you know, even if you go, if they go in smaller groups, there's an argument that that's round robin meetings um, in violation of the Open Meetings Act. Um, um, and there's pretty much a case. I mean, not directly on point with this, but when down at Cincinnati, when they were considering building uh, the new stadium, there was actually a lawsuit that got all the way to the Ohio Supreme Court, um, where council members came in and, and basically had an informational meeting um, with folks about that development. Um, and they didn't all show up at the same time. They were at different times, but, um, you know, the court said, nope, that was a violation of the open meeting because it's hard to say that it's an informational meeting and there was no exchange, you know, that they were just, you were gathering information but not actually asking questions and things like that. So um, I don't discourage you from doing all the investigation you want, but I guess I would encourage you to do it on an individual basis. So one at a time. Well, no, and not coordinated either. Yeah, not, and yes, not, not coordinated. coordinated. Yes. So, yes, Mr. Mann. Uh, I don't know where all of their developments are, but I believe Mr. Perez stated that they had 20-some around the state of Ohio. I am aware that they have one in Grove City uh, because several of his meetings down here were coordinated with uh, visits to his Grove City facility. So I don't know where it is, what the address is, but I'm sure Mr. Perez could probably provide that information. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. It'd be a lot shorter trip. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. May. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Yes. So what? Whoa. Thank you, Ms. Stanley. Yes. So I know what you just said, but I remember when the Rocks and Ravine thing was going on, and I said, you know, reach out to the guy and in whatever individually, and you sent out this email, don't meet with this guy. Remember that you know, for the Rocks and Ravine thing when you wanted to put the gas station in, you said don't do it. You were to, get totally against doing that, and we shouldn't do it because even you know. In reference, everybody was going to do it. You know, was a suggestion again, as I stated earlier. I know, round, but round he, robin. But it would have been meeting with him individually. I mean, it was one of those. It, it, so there's really no different. I'm, well, clarification. I'm not saying meet with him. I'm saying go drive to the facility and just. Well, that's a public thing. Anybody can do that. Well, I, that's what I'm asking. But I'm just, just not rules. as a group. You can't do exactly. it as a group. It's a public thing, but don't do it as a group. When I suggested that before, you had said that wasn't. Don't get a public transit bus and take a road trip. Well, and you know, and you know I wouldn't. You know what? I didn't mean yes. that either. Yeah, that and, and, and I, again, I would say it's like, yes, I mean, you know, um, meetings and things like that or whatever, my suggestion would be that, um, um, if, if you're looking for some information, I guess I would suggest that uh, if the developer uh, is willing to provide information, that they can submit that through the mayor, the service safety director's office, and then that can be, you know, provided to council or whatever. It's just, again, just, you know, you want it to be all transparent and above board. I haven't looked at their website, but I'm guessing if you go on their, the Danbury website, you can find the location of their facilities around the state. Very good. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Schoonover. Better yet, I think during the public hearing, they mentioned that a specific, one of their specific developments, if you looked at their website, that's what they would be considering. So. The Danbury, if I remember. Yeah. That is mm -hmm. That's what they're thinking, but again, we're not, the plans aren't even close, so now we're all sitting here speculating like everybody else, and mm -hmm. who knows. Okay, further unfinished business this evening. Is there any new business this evening? 
If not, we'll ask that the clerk read our upcoming scheduled meetings. February 10th, 6.30 p.m. here in Council Chambers, and again February 24th at 6.30 p.m. Upcoming committee meetings for the next 30 days. Code Enforcement and Zoning, February 3rd at 8 a.m. City Hall, 1897 Conference Room. Service, February 7th at 7.30 a.m. City Hall, 1897 Conference Room. Finance, February 10th at 6 p.m. here in Council Chambers. Water, Water Pollution Control, February 12th at 8 a.m. at the Water, Water Pollution Control Conference Room. Law Committee, February 12th at 9.30 a.m. at the Fairfield County Municipal Court Community Room. Public Works, February 14th at 7.30 a.m. at Transit Conference Room. And finally, uh, Finance, February 24th, 6 p.m. here in Council Chambers. Very good. Are there any bills this evening? There are none to be presented. Is there a need for an executive session? If not, a motion to adjourn is in order. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Please remember to sign your legislation. Have a great night.